If you were to choose one of the countries in the world with the greatest potential for renewable energy, Australia would surely come near the top of the list. But by any measure, the nation's abundant resources remain greatly underutilised. Compare this with Germany, which has the opposite problem. There are so many small energy producers, the government can't work out what to do with their output. Dateline's David O'Shea has recently returned from Germany, where whole towns are energy self-sufficient and have gone completely off the grid. But if they're so successful, why is debate raging about the future of renewable energy? Here's David. In the village of Schönau in the beautiful Black Forest of southern Germany, there's a remarkable energy revolution underway. And it's fitting that Dr. Eva Stegen is showing me around in her electric car. How exciting. These small kids are very astonished and ask their grandmas, is it children's cars? And I sometimes reply, yes, it is, it's for the children's future. Everywhere you look, there are solar panels which provide twice the amount of solar power as the national average. That power is then sold to an independent renewable energy company who distribute it to their growing list of clients. It's like a virus. <laughs> so, Dr. Stegen is the company's uh, public relations officer. Yeah. Wow, I've never seen a church with a roof like that. Yeah. What the people in Chino made, they made the solar revolution and they connected the first kilowatt on the uh, roof of the church without permission. Shortly after they installed the panels, the government introduced legislation allowing individuals and this church to sell the power they generate. They started because they wanted to help and afterwards when this law came then um, it was economically interesting for, for all the people who uh, invested the money in, uh, together in this. So. Also im Prinzip sehen Sie hier von allen fünf Anlagenteilen wie der Strom reingeht. Down the road, Frank, an accountant, also has a roof covered in solar panels, which earns him some extra cash. Does it make good economic sense? Is good money for you? Ja, also man verdient etwas Geld damit. Die Anlagen sind wirtschaftlich in sich und man erzielt eine Rendite so etwa von zwei bis drei Prozent im Moment pro Jahr. The local hotelier has a gas-fired co-generational plant which produces all the heat and electricity he needs. What he doesn't consume here, he sells to the company, EWS. Am Freitag, am äh, Mittags, da kochen wir nicht am Freitag, da kommt der Strom ins Netz, der geht dann ins Netz von, von der EWS. Und wenn wir viel Betrieb haben, dann holen wir von der EWS den Strom her. And the list of small-scale energy producers working with EWS goes on and on. But it wasn't always like this. Good. After the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, a group of Chernow residents literally seized power by buying the local power plant and turning it into the EWS cooperative. It was the only way they could ensure their energy was not derived from the nuclear reactors they now feared and despised. And they've been in control of their own energy destiny ever since. I think you can have uh, solar uh, panels everywhere in the world. It's, it's a very important source for electricity. And Ursula Sladek, one of the founders of EWS, is a so former school teacher who once knew nothing about energy. She's now an expert. If we look at the cost, uh, we had more costs for nuclear energy than for all renewable energies together. We must not forget that. And even today, even in Germany, the nuclear um, energy gets more support, more financial support uh, than uh, solar energy. 
For her groundbreaking work, last year Sladek won the prestigious Goldman Environmental Prize and an audience with President Obama. She took the opportunity to give him a book she'd published. It's against the global warming and it is also against nuclear power and so I want to give that to you. Mm -hmm. Well, he looked very, mm -mm, what is she doing there? <laughs> Ursula's company offers incentives to encourage renewable energy producers in Chernow to sell to them rather than to those using nuclear power. It's a windmill that belongs to citizens, but we uh, buy the electricity from that windmill and sell it to our customers. Why can't they sell it themselves to the grid? Um, they can, they, of course, they can sell it to the grid, but they get a little more from us, so they sell it to us. At the other end of the country, an hour's drive from Berlin in the former East Germany, there's another small village forging an independent energy future. As you can see, Feldheim is a very unspectacular place. It's a normal little village, it's the fire brigade, church, a little church, an old schoolhouse. Under its unremarkable surface, there's something remarkable going on in the village of Feldheim. It's the very first village in Germany to power itself directly from electricity generated on site. Werner Frovita works for the company Energie Coel, which set it up. Uh, we have some more villages who are energy self-sufficient, but they mostly uh, feed in their electricity into the national grid and uh, get it out from another point at the sockets. Here it is uh, physically uh, independent. We have an own cable home connection from the wind farm into the village and to each individual home, and this makes a difference. So there's no price dictate any longer, but you produce your own energy. You sell part of it into the national grid, but most of it you can use by, by yourself. And that makes you independent from big companies, from oil, from coal, from strong economic power, and from many other things. This is the biogas plant. As well as wind power, there's pig power. Some uh, 600 sows. Not only do they produce meat for the farmers, they also produce a lot of liquid manure, or slurry, for the biogas plant. It is not very delicious. After all, it's shit. Bacteria find it very tasty. They produce gases and the digestion gases, like, like, like you and me, when we eat beans. And, uh, and this, is a, this is a fuel. It can, you can use it like this is methane, and that's all. There's no secret in it. The gas drives a generator and feeds heat and electricity into each home in the village and the national grid. Along with all the power it produces, Feldheim also generates a lot of international interest. So, come in. We have a lot of visitors from Japan here recently. Well, since Fukushima. Since Fukushima. Yep. Fuo Nishikata from Fukushima. Oh, there was a family, a mother with her two children. Back in Chernow, Dr. Stegen is also dealing with a steady stream of Japanese visitors. She's explaining to some journalists from Tokyo how certain events lead to spikes in the number of people signing up to get their clean energy from EWS. You see, here in uh, the 11th of, of uh, March... It starts, it starts going vertically. Uh, kind of vertically, so that um, the echo of Fukushima. Not long after the Fukushima disaster, Chancellor Angela Merkel announced that Germany would close all of its nuclear reactors. It was a brave decision responding to widespread community concern about the safety of their own reactors. I think if, if there had not been so much activist against nuclear power, Mrs. Merkel would never have uh, taken this decision. Um, so it was, it was part Fukushima, but it was a large part the German activists because sh they feared not to be um, in the government anymore. So this was the real reason, I think. 
But euphoria at the news didn't last long. Just as the green movement was looking forward to further growth, last month the government announced a 30% cut in the subsidy for small producers selling power to the grid. They hope this will address problems of supply and demand. The news hasn't gone down well with the renewable energy industry, which has turned out en masse in Berlin to protest. Der endlich notwendige Ausstieg aus Atomenergie ist gar nicht anders zu bewältigen als mit einer Förderung der erneuerbaren Energie. Oder wir müssen zurück um 100 Jahre und das wollen wir nicht und das können wir auch gar nicht. 250.000 neue Jobs mit Zukunft, gut qualifiziert, nirgendwo auf der Welt gibt es eine so große Erfolgsgeschichte der erneuerbaren Energie. Jürgen Tritten from the German Greens says the cut will strangle the young industry. Renewable energies in Germany are a quite success story. We save about 126 million tons of CO2 each year. We created more than 400,000 new jobs. And for consumers relevant, renewables now stabilize the energy prices. And we don't want that this project will be killed. It's a lot of noise, sir. There's a lot of angry people here today. Yeah, these are people full of fear on their job. On stage, Tritton tells the crowd that the government and the power companies want to do away with renewable energy by stealth. Es geht schlicht und ergreifend darum, die erneuerbaren Energien aus dem Markt zu drängen. Eine einmalige Erfolgsgeschichte soll ausgebremst werden. But those pushing for the subsidy cut say it's critical to slow the rapid growth in small-scale renewable energy production. We don't need more. That is not possible. To, to have a larger system, that means it will be uh, stupid to build more. So that means we have to reduce this build-up capacity. That means Energy economist more Professor more Georg Erdmann has been appointed by Chancellor Angela Merkel to evaluate the industry. The, the change in the energy law is now urgent because if we don't change it in the right way, then it will be very difficult in the future to make this a competitive industry or market-oriented industry. But of course it is. it makes from an energy uh, point of view uh, no sense to make individual uh, small-scale solutions. We need an overall solution because at the end the system becomes more efficient, more also more reliable and uh, at the end cheaper. Germany has set ambitious renewable energy targets over the coming decades. And Professor Erdmann warns that if they don't get it right, they may have to break the promise to shut the nuclear reactors. So, th so there's still the, the possibility the government might reverse that decision? We have to work that this will not be happening. But, of, uh, but of, at the end, if we are not successful in replacing backup systems, we have to expect that the government, one future government, will have to revise, maybe extend the, the, uh, the, the running time of the last nuclear power stations before they are shut down. And that won't go down well with those pushing for a complete rethink of the way we produce and consume power. We have to save 85% greenhouse gases until the year 2050 in Germany. 85%. This is enormous. The same argument in Australia is met by an answer which is, well, what, you know, why would we do that when China and India are going to continue emitting? It, it, it makes no, there's no point. No, I, I think this is, this is really wrong because um, somebody has to start. It's, it's, it's the same thing, whatever you do, one must be the first and then the others come afterwards. David O'Shea reporting from a powered-up Germany.